Hello and welcome to this week of scientific programming in Python. This week we'll have a look at mathematical computing and the beginning of statistical modeling. And uh, for that we'll have a look at the SciPy library. And uh, yeah, this is a very widely used library and it's um, yeah, a backend for many other libraries, uh, some of which we have already used. And it's just um, yeah, a collection of functions um, which do not solve uh, one certain problem, but they're just um, yeah, a big collection of mathematical functions for optimization, um, statistics, signal processing. Um, yeah, it's basically a large bundle of um, different purpose functions that can be used in lots of different ways. And um, yeah, they, they offer some very powerful uh, mechanics to analyze data, to work with mathematical data, to solve equations even. And um, yeah, I will introduce the basics of this library today. Okay, so let's first of all import our uh, other libraries. And then we'll start with linear algebra. And for that, SciPy has a submodule called linalg. And um, yeah, this contains lots of functions um, which are used in linear algebra. And um, I will go through some of these examples to just show you um, yeah, the basics and basically the idea behind this submodule. And during this lecture, I will go through different submodules of the SciPy library and just show a couple of examples to um, yeah, just show you what kinds of functions you can expect in these submodules. Okay, so starting with linalg. Um, so we import linalg from SciPy. And the first thing uh, I want to show you is how you can invert a matrix. And for that, we first of all create this matrix. And uh, this is of course in NumPy. SciPy uses NumPy um, and they're basically very, very close, these two libraries. So um, yeah, we're using NumPy here to create this matrix. And then um, what we want to do now is create the inverse of this matrix. And for that, we can use this uh, inf function in the linalg submodule, and we just pass the matrix to it, and we'll get um, yeah, the inverse of our matrix. And um, yeah, what exactly is this inverse? So what this inverse is, um, you can compute it by multiplying um, x with the inverse and uh, then you want to have the identity matrix in the end. So yeah, this can be computed um, with uh, solving a linear equation system, but um, yeah, SciPy can do that for us using this inf function and this will just give us this inverted matrix and now we can use that um, to do whatever we want to do with it. But um, yeah, just to show you what like the features of this inverse matrix are um, here, we first ask um, yeah if this inverse of the inverse matrix is again the original one, and this is true. We check that um, with this NP all close to not run into numerical problems, and uh, check if our original matrix is equal to the inverse of the inverse. And yeah, this is true. And then additionally, just the dot product between um, yeah, the inverse matrix and the matrix. This is the identity matrix as we expected. And the dot product for matrices is defined as just normal matrix multiplication. Okay. Um, but now one thing there is to um, watch out for when inverting matrices is that you can only invert matrices which have a determinant not equal zero. And um, SciPy will actually check this. And as you can see here, this matrix now has a determinant of zero. You can get the determinant of a matrix using this dat function. And our singular matrix here has a determinant of zero. Um, yeah, singular matrices are just matrices with a determinant of zero. It's just a different name for them. And now if we try to invert this singular matrix, we get an error saying that this was a singular matrix and um, it's not possible to invert a singular matrix. It's just not yeah, mathematically possible. Okay, 
so much about inverting matrices. Now, um, something that might be a little more interesting, have some more uh, applications, is to solve linear equations. And um, yeah, linear equations come up very often when yeah, trying to solve some function, um, especially when you have uh, multiple um, variables and uh, matrices you want to solve uh, for some certain output, um, you will probably come across uh, these linear equations. And SciPy has a function to solve such a set of linear equations. And um, yeah, here we represent our uh, set of linear equations using a matrix. And this um, equation that we want to solve is basically this uh, matrix A multiplied with X should equal B. And now we want to know what X has to be such that A times X is B. And here X is a vector which is multiplied uh, to A. And um, yeah, the result of that is a vector and so B has to be a vector as well. But um, the SciPy function, which is called solve, um, actually allows you to um, put in a matrix as B and that will then uh, yeah, solve multiple X basically. So for each um, column in B, it will then um, solve for X and then return all of the solutions it found for the different columns in B. But um, yeah, for this example, we just um, set B to a vector and then um, yeah, we only get one solution. So two values for X, since we have B defined as a two dimensional, uh, as a two element vector. So it only has two elements. And for that uh, purpose, A also has um, yeah, two rows and two columns. Okay, and here we define A. Um, these are the same values as in this depiction here. And then we define B as well, also as a NumPy uh, array. And then we solve this by calling linarc.solve and we pass uh, the matrix first, so the set of linear equations basically, and B secondly as the solution. And then we get a result back, uh, we call this X. And this X is now a vector with two elements, which are the solution to this linear equation system. And we can check if this was true by just um, doing a matrix multiplication of A and X. And this should now result in B. So if we check this, uh, we get the result 3 and minus 2. And we can see B was 3 and minus 2, and we define it as 3 minus 2 here as well. So this worked and uh, it yeah, successfully solved our set of linear equations. Okay, then the third uh, topic I want to uh, cover is eigenvalue decomposition. And um, this is probably a little more advanced mathematically already. And um, I'm not sure, I think eigenvalues were part of the um, Mathematics 1 course. But um, just a quick reminder um, what an eigenvalue is and also what an eigenvector is. These are um, yeah, the values and the vectors that um, satisfy this equation here basically, where m is a matrix and v is now the eigenvector and lambda is an eigenvalue corresponding to this certain eigenvector v. And um, what this means is that if we multiply uh, our matrix with uh, this eigenvector, then um, we get the same eigenvector back scaled by lambda. And lambda is a scalar, so this will um, yeah, not rotate our eigenvector uh, in some way, it will just scale it. And um, yeah, this is basically the idea behind eigenvectors and eigenvalues, that um, an eigenvector is a vector that only is scaled when multiplied with a certain matrix. And uh, yeah, um, this eigenvector, of course, also uh, only corresponds to the certain uh, matrix M. And for each uh, matrix, there are different eigenvectors and corresponding eigenvalues. But um, yeah, they have lots of different applications. And um, 
yeah, it's kind of, for me at least, it's kind of an unintuitive concept of why this could be uh, important. But um, yeah, it has lots of applications. One example for that is um, PCA. If you um, have heard of that, PCA um, is a yeah, method of dimensionality reduction, which is able to um, yeah, convert a high dimensional space into a lower dimensional space, preserving um, maximal, maximal variance in the data. Uh, that's just one example. Um, another example is, for example, the Google PageRank algorithm, um, which is used to rank websites on the Google search. Um, yeah, that's just another example of where eigenvalues are uh, important. And um, yeah, I will now show you how you can um, get the eigenvalues and eigenvectors from a matrix using SciPy. Okay, so first of all, we define this matrix M. Um, these are just some random values I picked. Um, so yeah, lots of different, basically, yeah, pretty much any values would work here. There are some exceptions where you can't compute the eigenvalues um, of matrices, I believe. But um, yeah, I just picked these values here um, so that we can have a look at how that looks. Then, um, yeah, we want to have uh, as just to see how this matrix M transforms vectors. Uh, we create this example vector here. Um, it's called X. It's just one one, and um, yeah, let's have a look at how this looks so when we multiply m with x. Um, yeah, first original the original x is just one one, and then m times x, so the transformed x is now one point seven five and minus point five. So this matrix, um, yeah, transformed our x vector in some way. It rotated it, and it also scaled the vector. So um, we can already see that this x is not an eigenvector of m since it was rotated. But um, yeah, we now try to figure out what the eigenvectors are of this matrix m. Um, yeah, first of all, as you can see, um, this was scaled. Um, the norm of x, the original x is 1.4 uh, approximately, and the transformed one is uh, 1.82. And now let's just draw these vectors out uh, so we can have this visually and um, yeah, a little better understandable. So our blue vector here is the original one with 1, 1, and the orange one uh, is the transform vector. And um, yeah, this transform vector is just M matrix multiplied with this X ve uh, vector, so the original one. Okay. Now, how do we get the eigenvectors and eigenvalues? For that, there's the uh, eigen function in the Linux submodule, and we only have to pass our matrix to that, and then we um, get two return values, first the eigenvalues and then the eigenvectors. And um, yeah, in order to be able to draw them with the function I, I wrote up here, which just uh, takes these vectors and some labels and draws these arrows, um, we need to transpose our eigenvectors. Um, this is just a two by two matrix, but um, the rows mean, um, but the rows are the coordinates. Um, no, the returned from the eigen uh, eigen function, the columns are the different eigenvectors, but for the function, uh, the draw vectors function, um, the actual coordinates for one vector have to be in the rows. So for that, um, I just transpose this eigenvex, and um, now we get the eigenvectors as the rows. And if we have a look at this, we see first the eigenvalues. Uh, these are 1 and minus 0.5. And then here we have our eigenvectors, 1, 0, and this is negative 0.44 and 0.89. So these are the two eigenvectors and two eigenvalues we got. And you can already see that uh, the eigenvalues are complex numbers. And uh, this eig function will always return complex eigenvalues, even though they're not always complex. So that uh, will just be the complex type. But um, yeah, you can access the real component of that using um, the eigenval.real, as I'm doing here. 
and this will just discard the um, imaginary part of this number and only use the real component. Okay, so let's plot both of these. Um, so first the eigenvectors here. Um, the orange one is the second one from this list and the blue one is the first one. So you see one zero and this negative 0.44 and uh, 0.89. And these are the two eigenvectors of the matrix. Then, um, yeah, the second plot is the other transformed eigenvectors. And this is the matrix M multiplied with uh, each of the eigenvectors. And as you can see here, um, the first eigenvector exactly stayed the same. So this wasn't even scaled. And the second one um, was scaled by negative 0.5. Um, as you saw on this in this eigenvalue here, um, the second eigenvalue is negative 0.5. So this was uh, flipped around and scaled by 0 0.5. But um, yeah, it wasn't rotated. So this inverting the vector doesn't count as rotating, um, since it's just a uh, like negative scaling. Okay, so this is how we uh, now have the eigenvectors and eigenvalues of our matrix. And um, yeah, these are now the right eigenvectors, but there are also left eigenvectors. And um, what this means is, so right eigenvectors are the eigenvectors where you multiply the eigenvector on the right side of your matrix, um, whereas left eigenvectors are um, multiplied on the left side of the matrix. And since matrix multiplication is not uh, cumulative, um, the results of these two are different. And uh, here you can see the two formulas. So for the right eigenvectors, the V is on the right side of M, and for the left eigenvectors, the V is on the left side of M. And um, yeah, you can access um, both of these different types of eigenvectors in this eigen function using the parameters left and right. By default, um, left is false and right is true. So these are just the um, normal eigenvectors um, and the eigenvalues that we got previously. Um, yeah, uh, and this will just display the first eigenvector and the first eigenvalue. And um, then the second part here is MV, so the matrix multiplied with the um, eigenvector divided by lambda. So this should be the um, yeah, the original eigenvector and then um, also v times m so the uh, reversed order where we um, multiply the eigenvector to the left side of our matrix and as you can see here now we got a different result and our, our, our right eigenvector um, is not a left eigenvector and um, yeah so these are actually different um, and we can also access the left eigenvectors by just setting uh, the left argument to true in the eigen function. And now um, we get a different first eigenvector, um, but the first eigenvalue is still one. And now um, this right multiplication results in a different uh, vector, whereas the left multiplication divided by lambda is now again uh, the original eigenvector we had. Yeah, and you can also access both of them at the same time. So left and right, um, the eigenvalues stay the same. So here, um, the first uh, result, the first return value is um, are the eigenvalues. Then you have the left um, eigenvectors and then the right eigenvectors. Okay. Um, and yeah, there is some overlap with the NumPy library. So NumPy also has a LinArg uh, submodule. And there are some overlaps um, with the SciPy LinArg submodule. Um, but overall, the SciPy submodule is um, yeah, more general. It contains more functions and uh, also covers some different topics, uh, which NumPy's LinArg submodule doesn't uh, cover. So, um, yeah, you can use either of those. But if you are looking for some very specific function, then it's probably uh, yeah, a better call to uh, have a look at SciPy's LinArg submodule, 
since this is um, yeah just yeah it contains more functions. But just one example of um, eigenvalue decomposition again with NumPy and with SciPy. Um, here we create this matrix um, called X, and we um, get the eigenvalues with SciPy's linalg eig function, and then also with NumPy's linalg eig function. So NumPy, this is uh, also called eig, and um, yeah, if we run this and have a look at the eigenvalues from SciPy and from NumPy, um, you can see that they are the same, but SciPy returned them as complex numbers, whereas NumPy returned them as just real values. But this doesn't mean that um, NumPy can't compute complex eigenvalues. Um, it will just change the data type depending on what kind of eigenvalues that were. So if the matrix uh, has complex eigenvalues, then NumPy will also return um, yeah, complex numbers. Okay, but as you can see, um, if we check if these values and the eigenvectors are equal from NumPy and SciPy, that's actually true. So there's no difference in yeah, the actual outcome of the two functions.